Grizzlies fans, it is game day. The Grizzlies today will take on the Dallas Mavericks in Dallas for the fourth time this season. These two teams will match up. Joining me once again is Nick Anks to talk about this Grizzlies team, but we cannot talk about this Grizzlies team, Nick, without first mentioning the injury news that happened last night is that after his 25 game suspension, after what looked like the Grizzlies starting to get on a roll, John Morant is out for the rest of the season as he is going to need shoulder surgery. I want to hear from your perspective because I think we've said it from the Grizzlies perspective a hundred times, even, you know, since last night as opponents looking at the Grizzlies roster now, how does that change? Do you think the Grizzlies roster, how they play, how people are going to start defending them? Yeah, it changes. I mean, it changes so much. First of all, the news was just shocking. I mean, he was what day to day or like game time decision the last time that you guys played. And then all of a sudden he was just out and it, was on the backs of like the Tyrese Halliburton injury. Like it was just a weird day for point guards yesterday and just an awful day for the Grizzlies. I was sending texts to our locked on Grizzlies host. And I was like, I'm just like RIP guys. I'm so sorry for your season because it's one of those things where you, you, we already have seen how they play without John Moran. It's not like they have to guess like, Oh, what will this team look like? You, you've seen it already for 25 games. And so how the Mavericks then defend them tonight. You, you don't have that attacker. You don't have that, that guy that obviously changes everything about your offense, changes everything about, honestly, the demeanor of the Grizzlies team too. He's the guy that comes out. And I've thought since the beginning of Jaw's career when uh, that he he kind of has that like that it factor that they talk about in quarterbacks and things where team like players want to play with him and get fired up to, to play around him and, and all that. And so if you don't have that, then all of a sudden it's, it's a deflating thing in general. But then to have this injury and to know, dang, are we just about to go back to – how bad we played before Jock came back. Like, oh, it would just be demoralizing in general. And then, I mean, now you have this, the you know, fourth time you're playing this Mavericks team, and now you'll have Luka and Kyrie, which the Grizzlies have never faced. Yeah, the the only good thing I will say is that the Grizzlies are, this is their third game in this two-game road trip. They won both of them, and that game that they won against Phoenix, Jaw was also not playing. So you did get a glimpse of, the Grizzlies did not play great for that first 25 games, but you got a glimpse of what this team could be without jaw. And it did look a lot better than those first 25. Um, the Mavs, however, have also hit a, like a good role, I guess they've won four of their last five. And again, they have Kyrie and Luca back in and you mentioned it. We have not seen both of them play the Grizzlies yet. The one time where we could have Luca had a baby. And so then he was out and then Kyrie was out. Um, Luca is averaging 35 points against the Grizzlies, both games, he had 35 Kyrie had 10, but he was still, you know, starting to get his motor back, uh, in the Mavs last game against Minnesota, they both had 34 and 35. What has been working? Like, what is it? The chemistry? Is it just, they're playing at a high speed? What's going on with the Mavs right now? Yeah. The Mavs have this real clear hierarchy, which should be just such a duh obvious moment where it's, it's Luca one Kyrie two, and then everybody else falls in line underneath that. And Kyrie kind of entered this season as I'm going to be, he, he tried to play the Kevin Durant. Like remember when Kevin Durant tried to call himself the servant? Like remember when he tried that nickname and tried to make that stick, which is just such a dumb nickname, but I felt like Kyrie tried to insert that kind of persona into the beginning part of the season. I'm going to, grab rebounds, get, get steals, play, play defense. I'm going to make the extra pass, make a, a, a secondary extra pass. He's like, I'm going to be unselfish to start the season and not just be the chucker, take a bunch of shots and, you know, and screw everybody else kind of guy, which like you respect from a vet, you respect from a guy that's won an NBA championship, hit one of the greatest shots in NBA history. Like you respect that from a guy like that. The problem is the Mavericks needed him to be that aggressive score first like get a bucket for yourself kind of guy. And so the last couple of games, it seems like he's really taken that to heart, especially against that Minnesota uh, game. That's been the Mavericks best win so far this season. Some would call it a signature win. And Kyrie came out, scored the first couple of baskets. And then at the end, he scored a couple of threes at the end, just in real clutch time situation to give the Mavs that win. And so the Mavs need both Luka and Kyrie to be aggressive. It's It, it seems like such a, a normal concept, like an easy concept to understand. Like, you guys both need to score the way you guys do. But if they're both doing that, everything else seems to fall into line. And those two guys are both playing really good defense, or at least, like, trying and putting an effort. And as long as those two guys put an effort, it feels like everybody else goes, well, my whole thing is supposed to be defense, so I'm just, I have to put in all this effort because Luka and Kyrie are trying. And so it just seems like it's all working together. 
So with those two guys both putting up numbers, which you said like they should be, uh, the Mavs right now have a top 10 offense. The Grizzlies, however, have really hung their hat um, in the last couple of weeks, I'd say, once they started to get their chemistry rolling with Jawback on the defensive end, and they have a top 10 defense. Um, do you see these two things? I think clashing is the wrong word, but because the Grizzlies defense has been so good and the Mavs offense is really, you know, what powers them over teams, what do you feel like tonight's game is going to look like? Yeah, it's going to look like a lot of, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of open threes because they're going to have to keep trying to put pressure on Luka and Kyrie. I think there's going to be, uh, we'll see if they decide to double or not. That's been sort of a, a huge thing with the Mavs this year is if a team decides to double one or the other, uh, especially if one or the other is out, how do the Mavericks respond? They've responded pretty well. They, they've worked really well as far as getting the ball to somebody at the free throw line and kicking out to shooters. And then it depends on, can Derek Jones Jr., can Grant Williams, can Tim Hardaway Jr., can those guys hit enough threes to win a game like this? And uh, I, I think that's maybe what it's going to come down to if, if unless Luca and Kyrie are just like dealing, you know, if they're just dealing and they just hit shots that it doesn't matter who's guarding them. Like that, they're just that good uh, on offense. Like if that starts happening, then all of a sudden it's a, it's a different calculus for the Grizzlies. But if they're not, they're just playing like normal stars and not like insane can't guard them stars. Then I think it's on the, the other three point shooters. Derek Lively is not going to play in this game. That's been a big absence for the Mavericks. I think in all of this, um, John news, it got, um, like looked over that Jaron Jackson jr. Isn't hundred percent playing tonight either. Um, but I do want to talk about him in the case that he does end up playing this evening. Uh, he had 41 points most recently against the Mavs. The game before that he had four, but the last probably five or six games, Jaron has been on fire scoring efficiently from everywhere on the court. Picking up rebounds, he's had like career high rebounds, season high rebounding. Um, when you're looking at how he's playing right now, coming up against the Mavs, if you are the Mavericks, how do you get him to score four and not 41? <laughs> well, not having Derek Lively is is tough in that regard. It was great to see to see Lively get some experience trying to guard somebody like Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, if not him, then you start with Dwight Powell on him, I guess, and you try and just Dwight Powell for all the, the issues that he brings and all the, the frustration Mavs fans have with him, he is pretty good at uh, playing like some dirty basketball and trying to like do the, the hooks and shoves and all kinds of different things. Say bad things and, about uh, here, Nick. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that's what Dwight Powell does really well. He mucks up the game a little bit and gets players frustrated. And they're like, how can I not get around this guy? He's, you know, this Canadian. I, <laughs> so, and I think that it starts it starts with that, and then they'll throw Grant Williams on him, I think. And it's just if they can keep him in front of him because J Jaron Jackson Jr. was driving the basket. He was finishing last time that he played against the Mavs, and the Mavs have to just keep him in front of him, make him be a jump shooter, I think. I think that's probably something they'll try to force him to do. But I think that's going to be the key. Maxi Kleba's not going to play. He would be a guy that they would have guard him. They're just running out of big bodies right now with the Mavericks with all these injuries. Yeah, okay. Let's end with something real quick. If the Mavs do blank well, they win if the Mavs shoot the three well that's that's been the, that's been the case for every game that they've played the their entire season it feels like if they shoot the three ball well they'll win um I could I could extend that like extend if there's a fill in the blank in this question I could extend it to if this if the stars go off like that that could be the extension of it but uh yeah I think it's if they shoot the three ball well Okay, I think I'm going to mirror that for the Grizzlies if they shoot the three ball well. I think it is going to be a battle of the three-pointers. Mavs give up, uh, I think, eighth most in the league in uh, threes. And the Grizzlies are really feeling themselves in terms of th uh, three balls lately. Marcus Smart had a career high eight. Um, you know, they got Luke back. Vince Williams Jr. has been playing so well on defense, but also shooting the three. And so I think you want a little more from Z. You want a little more from Santi. And you're just hoping that that uh, they can hit threes and keep the Mavs to twos. and there's the game. Simple math. Nick, thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks, for, break thanks for breaking the news about jaw last night to me. Our friendship will never be the same, but I do appreciate you. Uh, you were like, I was like, I was like, well, and you said what? And I was like, no clue. <sighs> uh. Game two is on today at 7 30 PM. You can watch it on Valley Sports Southeast.